welcome back to DIY Fab Shop. Today I'm excited to share with you this custom design string alignment measurement system. So it's largely based on 3D printed parts, some purchase components, and really I designed it in an effort to make string alignments easier to do and hopefully more accurate. You know, string alignments have been around a long time. Lots of non-professional race teams and track cars will use this. Some professionals will use a string system. The reason I decided to try and design what I consider a little bit better approach is to, again, make it easier to do and hopefully more accurate. Now, I know it's not perfect, but I wanted to share it with you guys today, see if we can get some more folks to try it, give it a try, see how it can be improved, and make a generally available system, download some parts, put it together, and you have a, a little bit better mousetrap, per se. So without further ado, let's jump into the design. So the design architecture starts with this piece that I call the hub adapter. But essentially, it mimics the function of a center cap for your wheel. You can see those flexible tabs poke it into the wheel and secure it. The next piece I call the threaded plug. It literally threads into the hub adapter, and as you screw it in, it actually supports those tabs so that they can't flex, so that the hub adapter can't come out of the wheel. In the threaded plug, there's an insert, and then this threaded knob is used to secure the next part. This part I call the scale holder, which holds a little metal machinist scale and also has a platform for a digital angle finder for gating camber. This I call the trolley and it rides in a rail on the scale holder going left to right in this picture and it's also held on with a threaded knob. And this is a three quarter inch aluminum square extrusion that holds the two rim touch off scale holders. And then there's a left and a right rim touch off scale holder. And you can see here how it articulates. And then I consider these some accessories. Upper left is a spool for the line. Upper right is a conduit holder for a tripod. And then in the middle is a little guide to help measure caster. So for the 3D parts, I chose PETG for the filament to print these out of. All right, now we'll quickly go through the assembly of the different bits and pieces. So we have the hub adapter, the threaded plug, the threaded knob, and the insert. And we can just use the threaded knob to pull the insert into the part. The fit is not too tight, so you can just wind it down and you're good to go. And then the threaded plug just screws into the hub adapter. So the hub adapter is set up to mimic a wheel center cap. And there's three dimensions that are important. I call this one the wheel cap outside diameter. I call this one the distance to the detent and this last one I call the detent outside diameter. Here I can demonstrate how the threaded plug supports the back of the flexible fingers and keeps them from deflecting so that the hub will stay in the wheel. And we need to assemble four of those. So we take the two-sided tape to apply the scale to the scale holder. Uh, obviously very important to push it up all the way against the end of it so that you get an accurate measurement. Press it down firmly and then we take the washer plug and put the washers in that little slot those washers are obviously meant to hold the magnetic digital angle finder. And we put a little bit of super glue on the washer retainer here. And it has a little snap feature to it. So it'll deflect, but I think it's best to put a little super glue in there so it's more permanent. And we need to assemble four of these. 
For the spool, we take the fishing line and we go through these two little holes and tie it off to the inner spool. And then similar to the other insert, we can just pull it in with the threaded knob, crank it down. Then we thread the string through the one hole on the outer spool, put them together, put a little Loctite on the quarter 20 bolt, it's one inch long, and just hand tighten it. Don't make it too snug. We're just holding the two pieces together so it'll rotate. And then you can put a nut on the end of the string. And we do two of those. And the trolley assembly is just the threaded knob and a T-nut. And again, it slides into the center holder. All right, now that you've seen the bits and pieces that make up the design, let's go through with setting up for an alignment. So step number one is we need to get the vehicle up in the air so that we can access the suspension adjustments. So you can see here, I just built this, these wood blocks. That surface needs to be level that you put these on. So I just took a carpenter laser level, measured down, found that I needed to shim it in a couple spots, and I did that. And the other thing you need to do is have a turn plate or something to allow your wheel to slip on the platform. A lot of folks will use linoleum tiles with lubrication between them. I found this hack on the internet recently where you basically take a heavy duty Ziploc bag, put oil in it and put it down and it works surprisingly well. I think it's my new favorite way to do it. So once we get it up in the air, we got it on the platforms, everything's level. Now we move along to putting the wheel adapters on. We just snap the hub adapter in, twist the threaded plug in to secure it and the threaded knob, we just make sure there's enough clearance, push that in the groove, and then we just tighten the threaded knob. And you can see here that the holder holds the scale right on center of the wheel so we can measure for our lines. All right, now that all the hub adapters are on, I'm going to place the conduit front and back using the tripods and the conduit holder. So the distance between the two lines is, is really important. So on the conduit, I actually take a grinder and grind a little groove. Then I know that the stringer line can sit right in that groove, holding the distance perfectly. Gonna run the strings. The loop at the end of the string slides right over the conduit and into a groove. And I'm moving the conduit side to side and checking the scale for a measurement where the string goes over it. I set the tripods at the exact right height, but the string is just over the top of the scale. Then I just do the same on the other side of the car. All right, so I got the poles set up. You know, lots of folks have those systems that hang on their car to provide that cross to put the strings on. And those are great. I chose to show kind of a universal approach, but either way, it's really important for the theory of getting these strings parallel to the car that this conduit front and back are both perpendicular to the car because that's what controls that distance between these two lines. So for this system, when you go to set the conduit, you can measure off of the scale holder to the center of that conduit and match it side to side, both front and back. That'll get you really close to the 
conduit being perfectly perpendicular to the string. And then once you're happy with your setup, you can double check with a square. I would say that's pretty darn good. So here's really where you can start to see where the system shines. Instead of trying to hold a tape measure up to the string and measure to the wheel, you have your scale kind of stationary and all you have to do is move the string back and forth and it's just a lot easier to get a nice accurate number and you can see I use fishing line instead of a thicker string so that I can try and really dial in that measurement. So here on the passenger side right, I was at 48 and a half millimeters. I go over to the driver's side. I'm at 48 and a half millimeters as well. And now you don't have to be the same front to back because often your track width are different. And this car, the track width is different. So here on the driver's side back, I'm at 53 millimeters. And as I go over to the passenger side, you're going to see I'm also at 53 millimeters. So I've been able to achieve two perfectly parallel lines. And therefore, I just feel like the accuracy is better than what I've been able to achieve with just a tape measure in the past. Okay, so now we're going to take the toe measurement subassembly and slide it into the scale holder. Just align the, align the T-nut, push it forward, snake it under the string carefully. And then you align the two standoffs with the edge of the rim. And of course you want to have it on center and level. You snug up the threaded bolt a little bit. And then just towards the end when you think you have it all, you push it forward and just put a little tension on it. It really helps make it more stable. So now we can get toe measurement. So in the front, I'm at 23 millimeters. At the back side of the wheel, I'm at 18 and a half millimeters. And so then I can take that to my website where I put together a little calculator. So you can get a degree out of that if you'd prefer a degree. So take the millimeters, turn it into inches, enter it here, and I have 0.67 toe. Now keep in mind that's not actually the toe I'm running on the front. This was just one side. I didn't have the wheel perfectly straight. So obviously grabbing a camber measurement is super easy. And next we're going to talk about getting caster. So for the caster, you can see here that I had written down the offsets to the string. And so now I know the difference in my track width. To get caster, you can actually calculate it when you get camber at three positions. 20 degrees turned in at the zero point and 20 degrees turned out. In order to do that, you have to move the string out. So you still want the string to be parallel to the car. So I moved the string out to 144.5 millimeters in the back. and 140 millimeters in the front. So you can see the little fixture. That cross is 20 degrees off of straight. And so I use that to determine when I've turned in 20 degrees. Now in order to turn the wheel, you have to carefully raise the line up because the camber will make that scale holder go up in the air a little bit, so you have to be careful with your string. But then you set it at that 20 degrees and you get a camber measurement. So 20 degrees turned in, I'm at 3.9. And then I do the same for turn out. Again, using the little fixture to find 20 degrees. And my camber at 20 turned out is 0.3. And so I take that and my camber at zero and I can take it to, again, to my website, to the calculator. 
So camber at zero turn angle was 2.4, turn and angle was 20 degrees, camber there was 3.9, turn out angle was 20 degrees, and the camber at turn out angle was 0.5. So that gives a caster of 4.7. So I know that was quick, but uh, we were able to get tow, we were able to get camber, and we were able to calculate a caster. So I'm pretty pleased with that. All right, I'm really happy you joined today. I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a like, subscribe if you haven't, turn on your notifications so you can see upcoming videos. And in this vi video in particular, if you could forward it on to your motorsports enthusiast friends, that would be great, you know. And don't forget, if you're interested in trying this, we need to crowdsource the dimensions for various wheel caps. The information was briefly touched on in the video. The dimensions I need are on my website, all spelled out. You put them in the comments, I'll monitor the comments of the video. I'll do my best to quickly make CAD models, download and upload the STL files to my website and let you know they're there so you can download them and give them a try. Appreciate the support. Any feedback you have on the design, let's make it better. Put it in the comments, and we'll catch you next time on DIY Pack.